the results of what I called something that may be my biggest business regret are in. Now, was it my biggest business regret? It's complicated. Let's talk about it. All right, so a lot of you guys have been asking about the results from the local auction of stuff that I sent off. I sent off hundreds, if not thousands, of fishing lures and a couple hundred forced air rifles in the initial batch of stuff that I sent. We've got back the results of the auction. Now, I'm gonna post some, some screenshots of some of the top highlights from the forced air rifle auction that had some fishing stuff in it. I'm not exactly sure what to think about what happened, but I will say I've learned a ton of lessons and that's gonna be the main focus here that I wanna break down. I think there's a time to do local auction, there's a time not to do local auction as far as being a seller, but there's also a time to do local auction as a buyer. So let's break down all my thoughts on what happened. Okay, so the fishing stuff. Uh, for those that don't know, I bought out a 50 year old hobby shop, hobby shop Ron, he's a legend, Bought out a bunch of his stuff, filled a 26 foot U-Haul, uh, honestly a couple different times. So much stuff, had two storage units full, one of them was all hobby shop related items. Now he had everything from forced air rifles, fishing stuff, trains, tons of trains, planes, automobiles, slot cars, uh, collectible toys, video games, he had everything. And there's been so much stuff, we've been selling through a lot of it. You can see over here, the bulk of our eBay inventory right now is from Hobby Shop Ron, like this Star Wars thing we just listed, still getting to Hobby Shop Ron stuff. You know, you've got all sorts of trains, all sorts of really, really cool figures and inventory. There's a lot of the trains down here. This has been our priority with listing Hobby Shop Ron stuff, and our average sales price this year has stayed over $100 on eBay, which is insane. We've sold, gosh, it's got to be in the thousands of items at this point, and our average sales price has stayed over 100 bucks. That's crazy. So our focus has been listing the cream of the crop, the best stuff, the stuff that we can get out there quickly and having a high average sales price. The problem that happened was two storage units paying those monthly fees every month. It just didn't make sense to continue doing that. I needed to clear out some space. So I decided I would take the risk and I considered it a huge risk and go with the local auction and I wanted to give it an actual full test. So I gave them a quality, quality items, all of the fishing stuff, literally insane, Th hundreds of vintage fishing lures, uh, hundreds of reels, rods, fishing poles, all sorts of good stuff, and I did not cherry pick any of it. I didn't remove anything. I wanted to give a full trial run of a themed auction with high-end and low-end stuff all mixed in. My estimated value on this stuff was $15,000. So that $15,000 value estimation, that would be if we were to break down everything ourselves, and that's, I think, a little bit on the conservative end based on our quick research. There was so much there, some amazing stuff. With that in mind, we took it down to the local auction house. It was literally an entire van load, filled my van, floor to ceiling, and it's a stow-and-go van, so it was stuffed. So much good stuff. They were uh, surprised with how much I actually had. And they combined the forced air rifles and the fishing stuff into one auction. Honestly, the rifles did pretty well. We'll attach some screenshots. One of the rifles, a couple of the rifles went for over 200 bucks. Uh, I think they were still worth a good bit more than that, but I'm, I'm happy um, with how those did. A lot of them went for 50 bucks, 60 bucks. They did pretty good all things considered. Some of them went lower, like $5, $10, um, and that was a bummer. But I was, I was pretty happy with the results on those. Now the fishing reels and fishing lures. This is where it gets interesting. There was some serious value to these things, and I posted about it on this channel. Uh, some, some viewers of you, shout out to you guys who actually went onto the auction, bought some stuff to resell, did extremely well. A couple lures went for 30, 40, 50 bucks, like the really nice ones. A couple sets went for over 100, but outside of that, most of the lures went for like the starting bit of $5, or even like full tackle boxes, full of vintage lures went for 20 bucks, 25 bucks. These are worth hundreds. And that, was, that was hard to see. That was kind of my biggest fears realized. But I have to say, with that in mind, there's still a lot of lessons that I've learned and I'm really excited about the future uh, applying these lessons. I'm gonna share those with you guys right now. So with that in mind, I had a 50-50 split with the auction house and they sold everything 
for $7,800, which meant I got a check for $3,900. I approximated the value to be about $15,000 if pieced out, and I think that's pretty accurate on the conservative end. So in theory, they got about half of full retail value, and then I got half of that. The pros. I didn't have to do any work. All I had to do was drop it off, and they did dozens if not hundreds of hours of work to process through everything because it was a significant amount of work. I no longer have that storage unit fee. The second one is completely cleared out. I could not have done it without them. That's a huge pro, saving me 150 bucks a month. Um, the cons, we could have absolutely gotten more if we maximized it. Um, and really, we could have gotten quite a lot more and had uh, interesting inventory for a long time. Would I do the fishing stuff again for the local auction? No. I would say the reason being it's way too niche, right? So this is a local auction. They do local pickup. They also do shipping, but really they're advertising locally mainly. They didn't get enough eyes on this stuff. I tried to get eyes on this stuff, but I don't have a fishing audience either. Really like this stuff would be maximized on eBay. And if there's valuable stuff mixed in, I think eBay just makes the most sense. We did an auction on a random auction on eBay lures and got 500 bucks for like 20 lures just coincidentally while this fishing auction was happening. And what I realized is we could have done that on a lot of the other stuff without doing the research. We could have saved some time, just lot up 10, 20 lures at a time and let the national international market see these things instead of just a local market. That's the biggest downside, uh, but we saved so much time, which is the biggest upside. But now let's talk about the toys that I dropped off. And actually we have some results on the first batch and I'm excited to share those. But before we get to that, I want to thank the sponsor of the Caterpie Crew channel. And if you sell video games, you need to check them out. It's XYAB, the number one supplier of video game accessories, parts, and more. We love them. And this is a buy that I just got this morning at a garage sale. It's perfect. XYAB can help to maximize my video game sales. I use them all the time. Best service, best price, best products. If you're not using them and you're selling games, you got to do it. So the Wii battery covers, that's just one small example. They're the best price for them and they'll ship next day. I'm missing two right here. I'll order some. The Wii uh, covers, the doors, we get those from XYAB. They're well stocked. So I believe Matt has some ready for me. There you go. And then I got a PS2 Slim. It's over there. It does not read games. It powers on, needs a new disk drive. XYAB. We got that as well. And they got great deals, great quality, great prices. Trust me, guys. I found out about them about six months ago, and they have changed my business. The accessories to maximize video game sales is a game changer. So check them out. Use my link down below to get $50 off your first order of 100 or more. But now let's get back to the video. So the number one lesson that I, that I learned from selling at local auctions is to sell things that I, that I do not want to deal with or cannot sell. So the forced air, air uh, rifles were good because that was too risky for me to put on my eBay account. There's weird stuff with that. The things that I don't want to deal with was what I dropped off to the local auction house. Lower end toys, still interesting, unique. Some might take too much research. Most of these we deemed not worthy of selling ourselves on eBay. I filled two van loads with that stuff, brought it down there, and they're dealing with it. And it's actually going quite well. But the, the thing is, I don't have expectations for this stuff. This is stuff that I wasn't gonna deal with no matter what. It was in the back of my shed for months and it just, it was annoying to have. Uh, so getting that stuff gone is fantastic. And for the first small batch of stuff, I'll attach some screenshots of sold listings. Some lower end train stuff was in there, some Pez dispensers, a Coca-Cola machine. This stuff did pretty well and I got a $1,200 check for this stuff already and there's still so much more for them to go through with the toys. I think I might get more for the toys even though I think really they're probably one third the value as far as eBay value goes compared to the fishing stuff. So those toys are something that I would send to them every time. And uh, let me talk about a couple things that I think will be really good specifically for local auctions. I mentioned a couple things that did really well in the toy auction. One was Pez dispensers. And these, I'm telling you, we looked them up. We didn't find anything special on them. They went for $110 for like seven of them in one lot, which means I got 55. Fantastic, I'm thrilled with that. The other thing is the very large uh, Coca-Cola pinball machine. We looked this up on eBay, not worth much, maybe 20, 30 bucks plus shipping. Shipping would be a nightmare. 
we didn't want to deal with it. It got like 75 bucks. So I got, I netted more than what it's worth on eBay. Those are two examples of items that have very high perceived value. People know that some vintage Pez dispensers can be worth money. Most of them are not. If you look up the market on those, most of them are a couple bucks at the most, even if they're vintage. There are some that are worth a lot, but in this case, my case, I didn't have any that were. Coca-Cola, ton of collectors, perceived value is very high. That stuff is perfect for the local auction setting, and it's stuff that I'll bring to them every single time that I get it. And a caveat for, for selling in local auctions is this only makes sense if you have so much inventory that you're not going to be able to get to everything easily without the help of partnering with somebody else. And that was the main reason that we did this in the first place is we have so much to get through. We're going to maximize our games and the things that we know and love that have high average sales price, but other things we're going to take down to the local auction house and have them help us get rid of it. And to tag along to that, high perceived value is very important for local auction setting, but also selling things with high demand. Right? The, the fishing stuff was just too niche, not enough people in that market. So selling things with high demand, it just makes more sense. Sports cards, like low-end sports cards might make sense. You know, Pokemon cards, random video games that don't have a ton of value, things that have high perceived value and a lot of people are in the market for. That's what should go in the local auction setting, in my opinion. And I, and I think I've learned some tangible lessons here as far as that goes. Lastly, there's so much opportunity in local auctions. You've got some near your ho hometown. I've got multiple in my hometown that I have not discovered, but I literally have a package here from them. This is stuff that was in the same toy auction that my stuff was in from a different person. I bought all of these. So this was in the auction. The Sky Tier or Sky Tear expansion. It's kind of a niche board game, but these are all sealed. I got them for 10 bucks a piece uncontested. And they're gonna be worth an average of 30 bucks a piece. There's six of them, so I'll profit 120 bucks like after their shipping, after the extra buyer's premium on top of it. No brainer, great inventory, easy listings. I'm gonna be watching them frequently. The opportunities are huge, you know. If I wasn't selling my fishing stuff, you know, I could have targeted a few key items. You can sort by items with the most bids, items with the highest dollar. I think looking at the premium stuff is always going to be a good play. And you're probably going to get some deals in that local auction setting. So check out your auctions near you. I'm going to continue to check out what they're doing and try to find other auction houses near me. I've heard a lot of great stories. It's a great way to source. But that's it for this one. We're going to do another video in a couple days of processing our entire day of garage sale finds to see if it's still possible to Garage Sale for a Living in 2023. Subscribe for that and more. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.